My grandparents came to this country as immigrants. My uh, grandmother, Baba, as we used to call her, uh, from Czechoslovakia, came here, moved here to start the quarries. They came here from foreign countries to build that little hamlet of Granville and to build their slight industry that has survived and is now thriving. My name is Paul Labas. I'm a third generation slate maker. In Granville, New York, if you look around, just about every home has a slate roof on it. Our churches have slate roofs. As you can see, they use it for roofing tiles. They'll use it for siding. Our slate stone will last on a roof now anywhere from a period to 100 and 150 years. You're taking Mother Nature's product and actually shelters you from Mother Nature's wrath. My dad used to say, once you get cut by this stone, it's like a disease, it's in your blood, you just can't get rid of it. And it drives your mind to keep coming back to it. About 100 years ago, at one point in time, this was all flat ground with no water on it, no water in it. And all the hard work that those men did by hands, digging this great big hole in the earth. They were immigrants that came from Italy and Poland, Czechoslovakia, and they worked in these quarries. And that was their job. Dollar fifty a day, sometimes even less. And if they were killed or hurt or maimed or injured, there was no workman's compensation board. There was no social security. There was nothing to take care of the families. There was 10 men standing in line waiting to take his job. That's hard labor. Can you imagine coming from the old country, bringing your wife and your children to a completely new land, kissing your wife goodbye every morning, not knowing if you're going to come back alive that day or not? Some people like to let their mind wander while they work. Go. Where you can almost hear the stones crackling. Sometimes it sounds like a bowl of Rice Krispies. You get it just at the right point where she's starting. Then you just want to pop it. All right. Now that was a good plug. That opened her up nice. Talking. Come on. Come on. Baby's born. We're going to take it and we're going to split it in half, and then we're going to cut it on a diamond saw. After we cut it with a diamond saw, it'll be split down even thinner into about quarter inch pieces. Some people, it may sound like noise. To me, this is music. Music to my ears. It's been like that since I was a young boy. Even now, if you were to take a hammer and chisel and somebody was pounding on stone in the woods or something like that, the first thing it does is makes me want to walk over to it and see who's making slate. This is the most delicate part of slate making. Everybody should strive for perfection, but I don't know if I'll ever get there. I sure would like to, someday. A deck of cards. The saw cuts everything out to make everything approximately to size. The slate trimming machine makes everything exactly square and exactly the size that you want it. My father used to say, know what you're doing, then do what you know. If you don't, you won't succeed at long. You can only uh, buffalo people for a certain amount of time. But if you know what you're doing and you're true about it in your heart and your mind, you'll be okay. Working with stone, you're working with nature. You're working with something that God put together over a million years ago. Quarries can be related to big jigsaw puzzles. And instead of putting them together, you're taking them apart. It's like a big magnet, these slate quarries are. Sometimes I feel like I'm wearing metal boots because I can't seem to walk away from it. 
but I don't really seem to mind it either.